<laughs> uh, we are you? Amps that make my amps. He had a strap yeah. that Allison made, you know, so he put it on it. Okay. When I tried my amps out, Jeff, the guy that built my amps, brought over the amps. And I saw that this plum strap and said Buddha on it. I said, where'd you get that strap? He said, that was a Moody. I went over to the Buddha booth and I said to the owner, I said, Kenny, where's the strap place? So he took me over here and... Strap. They're great straps, great strap. So if you haven't noticed who this is, people, this is Leslie West. Uh, been around quite a while, an icon in the music business, going back from Mountain. Woodstock was our third show. There you go. They played Woodstock, dude. I mean, so you were playing with Jimi Hendrix in well, those Jimmy days. Jimi Hendrix's agent was our agent. That's how we got on the show. Oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah. You were managing some record companies, right? Well, no, my, my manager had a label, Winfrey, and Felix Pavilardi, who's no longer with us, he was his label. And then, you know, he has passed, and now we have our own label called Big Rack. All right. Distribute my red distribution, which is so fun. What's in the works for Leslie West right now? Well, believe it or not, I'm going to tell you something you probably would never have guessed. You know who Jay-Z is, the rapper? Have you had 99 problems? Yeah. He's my song. Oh, no way, dude. Him and Kanye West took songs of mine in common, all these rap guys. When Rick Rubin was doing uh, 99 problems, he said to Jay-Z, you need some heavy behind the rack. So it took Billy Squire's stroke yeah. and one of my songs on red and that's what 99 problem. That is and amazing. Kanye West did two songs taking the same song and then Common and another rap guy did it. So. But you know what I love about what you're telling me is that you have reinvented yourself time and time again. And part of the thing that I preach to these kids out there is that you got to reinvent yourself at every level and keep moving forward with well, your these, dream. Well, these kids that play the guitar, I'm going to tell you what the most important thing is. Yeah, tell me. Every time somebody picks up a guitar, usually you play the same damn thing you played yesterday. I force myself to not play what I played yesterday for the first 10 minutes. If you're playing something that you don't know, you'll learn something new. And tune up. You gotta be in tune. Or else you gotta, if you're not in tune, you get some shit better. Who wants to hear you? I mean, the music business has really, really changed out there. I get like a lot of emails of people who ask me, well, how am I going to go out there? How am I going to promote myself? How do I make it in music anymore? I know that. Luck. It's good luck. Give, give me some advice for that luck. shit. You need luck. You need so many things to fall in place now. If I had to start over from scratch, I don't think I would start. You know, so. But if you really want to play, if you're going to play and you play for nothing, if you're going to play because you want to be famous and rich, forget it. Would you say that... If somebody would have to go out there and try and make it in music these days, what would be the first move for them to do? First of all, writing songs is key. That's why I mentioned the Jay-Z thing. If you write songs, no matter if your group's a flop, somebody's going to need material. And I watch American Idol. Those people do not write songs. Oh. They have other people writing their songs. Yeah. That's what you need to do. Write songs and forever the songs will be around. You know? Copyrights don't go away. If you don't get your own copyright. But writing... I'm telling you, that's the key. That's what I love. That is amazing. So, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it straight from the mouth of experience here. And, yeah, uh, you heard it from, uh, I'm a legend of my own lunchtime, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You were on the Momo Zone and you've been accelerated.